Hey, I'm AF, and this is my channel, AF Comics. Here I review indie comics and just talk about stuff comic book related because I love comics. Now, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Lazarus. And yes, that is the name um, of the biblical figure. For those that don't know, who was like resurrected by Jesus after he died. And so, yeah, the book shares the same name. It's written by Greg Rucker, and its art is by Michael Lark. Now, Greg Rucker is a pretty well-established name in the industry. I pers not personally know him, but you know, I know him from his run on the Daredevil series, and I read his uh, Batwoman Elegy run too a while back when I was in like high school when I was first getting into comics actually. Um, but he's known for his take on like crime writing. You know, he really came into detention attention with his run on The Punisher. And Batman's No Man's Land, which is a really, really, really good comic. Honestly, I, I love that run because it got like one of my favorite characters introduced. Uh, Cassandra Cain, what came in during that series. And just the concepts in Batman No Man's Land is really cool. But Lazarus is Greg Rucka's and Michael Lark's, like their own dual creator, own content. Uh, Michael Lark is an artist. He's a colorist who pencils for DC and Marvel. Like, I like his work on Captain America Winter Soldier. He worked on that with Ed Brubacker, who is Brubacker is another good writer. I like a whole lot too. So I'm just saying, but I like Lark here too because what? Let's just say his his art in Lazarus is not for the faint of heart. And I hate to compare artists, but if you've ever read Black Widow from the 2014 run. And then think of Michael Lark's style as a grittier Phil Nutto, you know, from the Black Widow series. You know, Nutto's work is really polished and kind of somber, while Lark, he, his style to me is more realistic and weighty. And if, once you see the pages, you might agree. But moving on, here's a, like a bit of background. So Lazarus is set in a post apoc setting, you know. The 99% known as waste are now like the 99.9999999% and the 1% are the 0.0000001%. They're known as the families. You know, they got something resembling a middle class called the serfs. Work for the families as like a paramilitary group. So, or they're just like scientists or they're doctors or something. But they're not family, but they're not waste either. So they, they're the middle class, essentially people in better positions than waste who live a life as you might expect be with that name. But food is the most valuable commodity now. You know, the families own what are known as the grain, and that allows them to grow food in abundance, which they keep in like things called seed vaults, you know. And the Carlisle family is the main focus of the comic, and their Lazarus is forever Carlisle, nicknamed Eve. Um, so from th this, we easily gather that a Lazarus is a family's enforcer, and they carry out you know, the law and the order that the family decides what to do. You know, and forever has a special ability of advanced regeneration. So it's funny too because she looks a lot like X23. And she kind of got similar abilities. Not exact, but I thought that was just a cool parallel. So she can take more punishment than any normal person ever could. You know, she can get up from a lot of wounds and stuff that would kill a normal person. But the only other characters we really meet in this chapter, uh, this first issue, are Jonah Carlisle and a serf, you know named James, who's the doctor scientist for forever. And Officer Oriso. I mean, there's other, some named characters, but, you know, they are not, like, main characters or anything. And that's, the characters have any staying power, as you'll see. Okay, so that's it for the background. Let's move on to the story. So, we begin with forever being shot. I know. Multiple times, actually. And this is where Michael Lark shows off his penmanship and his ability as a colorist. Because Forever's injuries are very graphic. And admittedly, 
disturbing. But like I said, she has an advanced healing factor. And she's back on her feet in under two minutes. And when she gets up, she don't play no games. I mean, she fucks these dudes up. And find out later that she's actually recounting the events to her caretaker James. You know, after that conversation, and Eve showing some signs of remorse for, you know, killing what are essentially starving men, James tells her that he can drug her for her empathy, which is really cold-blooded. And I guess it really gives James that whole cold-blooded scientist shtick down pat, because I was just, it's a weird request request for her, but you know, given her status, I'm pretty sure there's more to it. So, um, forever goes to meet her brother in Saint San Joaquin, you know, California, at a place called Harvest One. You know, and before she arrives, James and Jordan are talking about forever's questioning between her and James earlier, and it's clear that James is drugging her for things besides healing. You know, based on how Jonah reprimands James, um, and we also find out that Jonah is privy to the um the therapy the drug therapy and he isn't happy that it's not working you know so that's what their whole disagreement comes between james and jonah so jonah puts on an act and greets forever when she arrives and it's kind of awkward because you didn't see how he was acting before and she's kind of weirded out too she's surprised by it so it's awkward on all accounts you know next forever is briefed by her sergeant about what's going on at harvest one you know apparently Harvest One was attacked by a rival faction known as the Moray family. You know, and strangely, there was no warning of the incoming attack, no thermal, no radar detection, nothing. And on top of that, the whole facility went dark prior to the attack. You know, and after the ruling out system fault, this kind of understandably leads Jonah to conclude that they've been betrayed. And he and Forever have a short dis disagreement before Eve, you know, eventually relents under Jonah's presser. So, the senior technical staff are gathered and they give an ultimatum. Either they admit to the crime or they all gonna die. Yeah, it's that type of life here. So, before Jonah can have everybody executed, an old man steps up and he takes one for the team. So, Eve commits the deed after some great reluctance and soon after returns to James and Sequoia here they talk about forever's feelings which I think is cold for are you thinking anything you shouldn't be thinking on the side of like James but forever lies and the comic ends so on to the verdict alright first of all Lazarus is one of my all time favorite comics and I don't just mean indie comics either like when you read the mainstream comics for a while things can get really like stale get the recurring villains, no lasting consequences, same old characters. The whole process can get monotonous, you know. Lazarus was actually the second indie comic I ever read and it doesn't disappoint, you know. The characters are fresh, they ain't got no ties to a pre-established cast, They got a, so they got a bunch of room to improve. You know, the art by Michael Lark is really detailed without being photorealistic because in my comics I don't like the photorealism, I like the impressionist style of the artist you know lark he really does that but he don't lose like detail important detail because his facial expressions are on point like i think he got like some of the best facial expressions i've ever seen in terms of like detailing how his, the emotion of his characters so i get like downright uncomfortable with some of his panels which is a good thing you know the concept is really grounded and relatable you know in fact after reading this comic i was inspired to really get into agriculture and focus on growing crops for myself and my family you know the scenario of the rich controlling food is just too per personal to like not relate. You know, it really puts into focus the state of our own world, you know, juxtaposed against the backdrop of a fictional comic book. You know, this makes the characters feel more realistic when you compare them to a typical DC or like Marvel book. You know, the motivations in Lazarus are more subtle and the relationships are strained. You just get the sense that these events that can actually happen and that's what ups the stakes in the storytelling, you know, realism. So that's going to be it for me, y'all. AF Comics, I'm signing out. And I hope y'all like the review. Please drop a comment, you know, subscribe, like, whatever you do. And I'll catch y'all next time.